Welcome to CGTN. This is a special live coverage on China's space program, the launch of the Shenzhou 16 manned space mission. You're watching live footage from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. And this is in the launch tower. Technicians and ground staff are doing final preparations before the launch time. It's scheduled at 09.31. Beijing time, that's 0131 GMT. So we're exactly at this moment one hour to the official launch of the Shenzhou 16 manned space mission. And technicians and ground staff are doing a final preparation. No details can be missed for this a big moment. At this moment, the three Taikonauts for the Shenzhou 16 mission, Jing Haipeng, Zhu Yangzhu and Gui Haichao, are well seated and prepared in the capsule waiting for the launch. And for more insight, we're joined in the studio by Professor Yang Ruguang and Mr. Xu Yanzhong. So, gentlemen, what are we seeing now, the preparation, Professor? Well, uh, you can see from this video is on the, as Yansong has mentioned before, the ninth floor of the launch complex. And now we can see that the side hatch of the Shenzhou uh, 16 spaceship has already been closed. Uh, and now we can see is the hatch of the payload fairing. So uh, uh, next, uh, the payload fairing will also, this hatch will be closed. And at this moment, uh, the, uh, if anything wrong happened, we will depend mainly on the emergency escape system. Uh, right, so no detail can be missed at this uh, moment. So, Mr. Xu, what are the usual routine for the one-hour countdown? Well, I think one-hour countdown is the, uh, uh, as you have just seen, the locking of the capsule and locking of the, uh, the service module as well as the, uh, the orbit module and the fairing itself. Once it's uh, all locked, uh, we'll be having the uh, opening of the hatch, let's say the hatch for the uh, rocket uh, itself, the Shenzhou rocket mm. and also the integration and testing uh, of all facilities as I mentioned that the power be provided by the ground system uh, until the last minute and um, we will uh, the last separation of the arm is the capsule arm in itself so the rest of the arm will be separated mm. uh, so the last uh, separation is the capsule arm and then that that provides the final route for the astronauts to uh, travel from uh, the capsule to the escape uh, tube and then, then there's uh, also uh, routine checkings of the ground facilities and system checks of all uh, launching systems, uh, life support system, astronaut system as well as search and rescue system that is ready for the uh, emergency cases. Right, and uh, we've just passed this crucial mark, one hour countdown to the launch of the Shenzhou 16 at 0931 Beijing time, 0131 GMT. Now for the latest, let's cross live to our reporter Sun Ye. She's standing by at the Jiuquan Satellite launch site. She's really close to the launch tower. Sun Ye, bring us up to date. Hey there, Pandang. Good morning again from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. We are 1.5 kilometers from that launch complex, that launch tower. And compared with the last time we were talking, we're now getting a slightly better view of the rocket. You'll see that the top level of that rotation platform, it has removed, revealing uh, the tip of the escape tower. And later, the bottom level of that rotation platform, it will move to and we will see the boosters. And still later, uh, when the middle part of that is removed, we will be seeing the part where the Taikonauts are staying right now. Now, the Taikonauts, they are already in the cabin now, and they're right now part of the process, the ongoing constant process of checking up. We hear um, all the systems they're asking, is everything okay? Is everything zheng chang uh, all the time? And that's the thing that's, that happened before, and I think will be leading up uh, until the final hour. Everyone, every uh, system, they're checking for um, all the conditions. Now, we've just to talked to a spaceship designer, and he said for men space flights, because it's so important, uh, they cannot only rely on the figures, the numbers, the screens. They have to talk 
talk with uh, Taikonas to hear them and see them move, see their gestures, and that's how weighty this thing is. Also coming from the spaceship designer, he said in a few minutes, um, the spaceship will be powered by itself, essentially be pumped up uh, by its own heart. And that's the whole process we're w witnessing this morning too. Um, that is the, the rocket, the combination, slowly frees itself off the tethers on the ground and readies for launch. And again, we will always be here. <laughs> this is one of the best places to see that launch. You should see the crowd around me. Everyone is jostling uh, for the best, uh, best spot for photography. And we'll be reporting you and updating you on what we have from here. Pandeng. Looking forward to that. Our reporter Sun Ye at Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwestern uh, China. And as we are talking about this, uh, the three Taikonauts are now in the capsule making final preparations. Uh, Mr. Xu, it looks like the commander for the mission, Mr. Jing Haipeng, is reading some kind of manual right yes, now. Yes, they are going through the menu, uh, check menus and the checklist is just like the airplane taking off. Uh, you have to go through all the checkings and you have to check all the systems uh, that is ready for the, for the takeoff. So the commander in, uh, in control is doing all that with the assistance of the two astronauts beside them. They're uh, doing the checklist one by one and they're checking this on the time sequence, you know, as, as we have the countdown for less than one hour. So every minute there's a check, uh, check, checkpoint. So they have to take all this uh, before they, they're ready to take off. Uh, let's talk about the shape of the launch tower right now, Professor. It looks like uh, not changed so much compared uh, to about one, uh, one hour ago. Uh, I can see that the part which uh, were, was embracing the escape tower Yes, uh, it's now fully totally. open, uh, but the not rest fully open. is Only the, still closed. A uh, 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 platform on the top were, uh, were opened because you know that's uh, to uh, make the emergency escape tower exposure to the outside. Uh, so this is very important step. But you know that only uh, you maybe several minutes later we can see that the uh, the other platform will be rotated uh, and uh, finally opened. Uh, but still, as I emphasize that uh, even if all the platform were opened, there still remains some rotational arms, some small arms connected to the vehicle with pipes and also cables to the vehicle. Uh, as Yensu has already mentioned, uh, only several uh, seconds before the liftoff, uh, we can switch the uh, electricity power from the ground uh, to the batteries inside the launch vehicle. Seconds before, uh, just to confirm that, so seconds before the seconds launch, before, uh, there yeah. will be a switch. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe uh, one and minute or even less. And that's quite enough for this crucial switch. It's a very crucial one, exactly. You mm. see that uh, before the launch, we must uh, change from the ground power supply to the vehicle itself, uh, and we use the storage batteries. Right. Uh, what about weather right now? It looks sunny, and uh, looks clear, uh, the wind clear. is getting milder uh, from uh, what I saw of uh, the background from the reporter earlier. Uh, well, uh, it looks very clear now. Mm. Uh, uh, at this season, it's really a good weather. Mm. You see that usually, you know, that in March and April, uh, in March and April, it will be more windy than today. Right, right. So weather is also one of the deciding factors for a successful launch, right, Mr. Exactly. Shin? It's just like the airplane. If you're taking off and landing, the, the shared wind is very, uh, very crucial for landing. And this is also uh, the same case. You know, if you have gusty wind in the launching side, you can you have to abandon the launch and you find another launching windows. So weather is one of one of the key elements for uh, playing in this uh, in this launch window, as we call it, one of the elements. Mm. And also, as uh, Professor Young mentioned about the uh, the power cord, the umbilical cord, we call it. Some of the launch vehicles that use so much power that you can see that, for example, the Saturn rocket, the biggest one from U.S. And that's it, the, the escape that's tower, the escape right? Tower. Yeah. The umbilical core separate at the even at the liftoff when the uh, when the rocket lifts off, the umbilical core separates. So that you know the providing of the power to the to the launch vehicle is very important because the battery is limited uh, to providing such a. A, a powerful system because you know you have to have support the life support system you have to support oxygen uh, supplies to the astronauts you have to support the electronics control system the gyros and all the facilities and all of that depends on the electricity and batteries uh, are limited resource on the uh, so before the deployment of the solar panel we cannot announce even the success of the launch uh, launching activity right and we've already 
been waiting for that big and cheerful moment. You can see this launch complex. We built that in 1990s, so it is a relatively old launch complex. So uh, the launch complex we built in Hainan Wenchang spacecraft launch site is more advanced than this one. Mm -hmm. uh, both this launch complex and the uh, launch complex in Hainan province, we use uh, what we call the uh, triple vertical mode, which means that the launch vehicle will be assembled uh, vertically and transferred to the uh, launch pad vertically and then launch vertically. So. Uh, in this triple vertical mode, uh, the most uh, important status of the launch vehicle together with the payload will be in uh, uh, constant uh, uh, status. So that will be benefit from this, uh, which can simplify the whole launch process. But you know that in a uh, Wenchang launch site, it's more advanced than this one because there is a small service tower. Uh, together with the uh, launch vehicle. So the, not only it will be in vertical mode, but also the cables, pipes, connected vehicle will not be changed from the VAB to the launch pad. Mm -hmm. So uh, today, I believe that in the future, you know, that uh, this, as we have already di discussed during the period section, uh, this Launch 2F is the only human rated launch vehicle for China. But in the future, you know, that China is developing the new generation human rated launch vehicle. Uh, it will not only be used for the potential uh, human missions to the moon, but also will be used for the uh, crew transportation to the China's uh, space station. Uh, but the probably that will be launched in the Hainan province. So uh, the, uh, what you call the Long March 10 launch vehicle will have at least uh, two configurations. One is used for the launch of the uh, spaceship to the moon, and the other will be uh, uh, with a uh, single core stage with no boosters, uh, and the capability will be about 14 tons, which will be used to launch uh, six to seven crew member to China's Tiangong Space Station. Right, we'll be talking about uh, carrying vehicle uh, yep. later, but now let's turn to the destination of the three Taikonauts at this time, the China Space Station in the outer space. It was the construction of the China Space Station was completed late last year. Our reporter Zheng Yibing explains its current configuration. This is the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, where the Shenzhou 16 manned spacecraft is preparing for his historic mission in China's Tiangong Space Station program. What would the Tiangong Space Station look like during this phase? I have here the badge for the Shenzhou 16 mission, which clearly indicates the manned spacecraft will dock with the Tianhe Core module of the station from below. The space station will consist of three modules and three ships. This model represents the Tianhe Core module, equipped with two berthing ports and three docking ports. On the left and right sides, we have the Wentian Lab module and the Mengtian Lab module. While the Tianzhou 6 cargo ship is positioned at the back, and the Shenzhou 15 manned spacecraft is located in the front. Just below is the Shenzhou 16 we mentioned earlier. This configuration resembles the in-orbit transition phase between the Shenzhou 14 and Shenzhou 15 on November 30, 2022. This new combination will have the total mass exceeding 100 tons. It's worth mentioning that although the Shenzhou 15 spacecraft will return to Earth after the brief handover with Shenzhou 16, the China space station will quickly return to the three module and three ship configuration. And why is that? This brings us to the Tianzhou 5 cargo spacecraft, which we witnessed the launching and docking with the station in November last year, as well as its undocking in early May to leave its port for its successor. Currently, it is flying alongside the China space station and will dock with the station after the return of the Shenzhou 15 spacecraft. These cargo spaceships have more critical tasks than being simple couriers for space cargo. For example, Tianzhou 5 will provide propellants, solar power, and waste storage for the station in the coming months. The three module and three ship configuration will remain in place for nearly half a year until the Shenzhou 17 manned mission. Looking ahead, China Space Station will expand with additional modules. So please stay tuned to China Space Exploration and we'll keep you updated. Zheng Yibing, CGTN, in Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. You're watching CGTN. This is a special live coverage on the launch of the Shenzhou 16 manned space mission of China. You're watching live footage from inside capsule. 
the three taekwondoists, Mr. Jing Hai Peng, Mr. Zhu Yang Zhu, and Mr. Gui Hai Chao, are well seated, and now they are still preparing for the big moment, the launch of the rocket. So, uh, Mr. Xu, uh, as we just heard from our earlier report, uh, the configuration of the China Space Station, the destination of the three taekwondoists this time, uh, it's now in a T shaped configuration. Uh, so that will remain so during the whole Central 60 mission? I think yes. Uh, the T-shape is uh, 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 the core module uh, Tianhe along with the uh, Wentian and Mengtian that forms the T-shape. Uh, as a, What we call the back of the sh uh, spaceship is the, the cargo ship uh, uh, and then the Tianzhou and also the, uh, the, uh, the front of the vehicle or the T-shape is the uh, Shenzhou 15. So Shenzhou 16 is going to be docking on the underneath uh, of the, uh, the T-shape. So that forms a uh, configuration of more than 100 metric ton uh, space object uh, in, in a 400 kilometer per, uh, you know, orbit. Uh, this 400 uh, kilometer altitude uh, is the areas that also uh, has less atmosphere, but also has uh, what we call it atomic oxygen that is very erosive. Uh, material uh, for uh, spacecraft. So uh, the bombardment of that material to this uh, space station has to be examined because the uh, station is built, uh, built and designed for 10 years. So that constant design checking uh, for the integrity of the station is very important. We know that there's some leakage in the International Space Station, whether it's human error or, or natural. And also uh, the Russian old station, Mira. Mir station also have some uh, uh, leaking and uh, so all of these is very uh, crucial for the safety and security of the station and the sustainability of life forms on, on board the station including astronauts and experiments. Now we're watching this countdown clock at uh, Space Flight Command Center at Joe Transat Light Launch Center 43 minutes to go uh, to you. Uh, the launch. Uh, Mr. Xu, earlier you mentioned the mass of that space object, the China Space Station, uh, more than 100, 110 uh, cubic meters. Uh, this Met question has been, uh, your metric meters, metric sorry. Tons, metric yeah, metric tons, tons yeah. yes. Uh, so uh, this, ha this question has been puzzling me for quite a long time. So you mentioned this mass and its weight on Earth, right? But in outer space, it's supposed to be much lighter and the propulsion it takes should be much smaller than that on Earth. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, once you're in microgravity environment, weight is not an issue. But the, there is also, you're in the Earth orbit, you're affected by the Earth gravity. And also, there is very thin atmospheres on, uh, in that orbit, uh, including nitrogens and atomic uh, oxygens and many other mater materials. That drags the spaceship. Uh, even slower and lower. So the propulsion that used is to lift the uh, the uh, spaceship uh, or, or the uh, uh, or the uh, station to the uh, proper orbit, mm. so that it can sustain in that orbit. So the propulsion is needed mm. on board that mission. So we had uh, experiments done in the previous missions for rendezvous and docking. So that uh, rendezvous and docking, including fueling uh, of the uh, station, fueling of the station. Uh, is not easy because uh, once you're in microgravity environment, the fuels are also floating around instead of uh, you know on 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 its uh, bottom uh, of the container. So the fueling process also is a challenging technology. So we have uh, administered that, and also we have performed successful uh, fuelings and the uh, cargo ship. Uh, in, in, in addition to providing uh, food supplies and experimental materials, also provide fueling to the station. Right, and as we're talking about this, the Shenzhou 16 crew will soon start their stay on the China Space Station as we look ahead to their new assignments. Let's also look back on what Chinese taikonauts have achieved in the past two decades. Sun Ye has more. The Shenzhou 16 crew who starts their journey from here are responsible for the first manned space mission since China's space station entered long-term operation. They are the first to arrive at the space station this year, and later this year there will be another Shenzhou crew heading to the space station. So twice every year, two Shenzhou crews to the space station, that's the plan. And here are all the Chinese taikonauts who've made it to space and made all of these possible in just 20 years. 
here is Xiang Liwei, who in 2003 became the first Chinese man in space. And that's Jai Zhigang, who in 2008 became the first Chinese taikonaut to conduct a spacewalk. And the first female taikonaut is Liu Yang. She went to space in 2012. She stayed there for around two weeks. And the first spacewalk by a Chinese female taikonaut is conducted by none other than Wang Yaping. That was in 2021. A memory is still fresh for those of us who tracked how China's space station has come together. And we see Liu Yang again. She's part of the history-making Shenzhou 14 crew. It's the changeover between Shenzhou 14 and 15 crew that officially signal the start of long-term manned residency on China's space station. And by long-term, we're talking about 10 years or even more. This place is really important for Chinese taikonauts. You get the feeling that dream for space is really at the heart of their life on Earth as they live in a place called Quest for Space. And every time before launch, they are first here on the square called Dreams Come True. With so much live streaming and videos from the Taikonauts these days, we feel like we know them. But maybe we will never really understand what drove them to set those milestones one after another. And we may never really know what it feels like in space. So we talked to one former NASA astronaut to understand what lasting changes experience in space has on them. Almost everybody talks about how fragile our planet is mm -hmm. when they come back. Our thin atmosphere mm -hmm. and the effects of pollution, the effect of humans that you can see from space. That's one change. A another change for most uh, people who have flown to space is how you view your place on mm -hmm. planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So I used to tell people, I'm from Cleveland, and this is how I identified myself. Mm -hmm. Today, if you would ask me, where are you from? I say I'm, I'm from Earth, and it doesn't matter to me anymore what city, state, country, continent, language, religion, none of that matters. Like we're, we're all Earthlings here. Chinese taikonauts have said in space and on the ground that their space dream and the unending exploration is for the good of all humankind. And that's perhaps one thing we can understand about Chinese taikonauts. Sun Ye, CGTN, Jiu Quan. You're watching live footage from Jiu Quan Satellite Launch Center, and we can see that launch tower is gradually opening, and now we can see uh, parts of the launch vehicle right now, Professor. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the first step is to open the platform on the top, mm. and then the second step is to open the uh, platform at the bottom. Now you can see uh, the, the the bottom platform has already been opened. We can already see the four rocket boosters of the Long March 2F. Actually speaking, the Long March 2F is a what we call a two and a half stage rocket, which has a core stage uh, with a diameter of 3.35 meters and uh, four rocket boosters, each with a diameter of 2.25 uh, meters. And the you know that the, each of the uh, booster use one rocket engine, which is the same as the core stage. While the core stage uh, use four of these engines. So uh, at the ignition of the launch vehicle, eight engines in total will be ignited. Right. Uh, so what what's the half part about? Two and half. Half means the four boosters. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And you know that's uh, the the core stage has two stages. The second stage has one rocket engine and four vernier engines. Right. Uh, the the main engine is the uh, same type of engine uh, comparing with the first stage, but in a different version, uh, which calls it as a vacuum version engine, which only uh, work in the vacuum conditions. So the thrust will be higher, and the uh, the specific uh, spa, uh, spe uh, specific impulse will be higher. And the four vernier engine will be used to control the directions of the flight. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the launch sequence is that the main engine on the second stage will uh, uh, shut down first, and then the four volume engines will adjust the trajectory very precisely to ensure the orbit is accurate enough, and then shut down. 
Right, now we're almost 35 minutes to the launch and uh, the opening of the launch tower is uh, starting at this moment. The bottom of the rocket uh, is now in the open air. Uh, Mr. Xu, what's the consideration here opening uh, the uh, launch tower gradually so close to the launch time? Is there some kind of thermal control consideration in terms of... Uh, keeping the propellant at its best of form? Um, I think the opening of the hatch is the uh, indication that the, everything is going smoothly and is, uh, there's no anomaly uh, occurred in this process. Otherwise, it would not be opening. So that is, uh, that is the preparation of the launching. Uh, the propulsion system does not need to have uh, a precise temperature uh, that needs to be capped for ignition because the uh, the fuel it's using, using is very traditional fuel, where we call it UDMH and nitrogen tetroxide. These two materials, once met, will be self-combusted. We do not need any uh, sparkling to ignite this, uh, uh, this whole thing. And they're so, quite stable at this stage. What we call the traditional fuel is very, uh, very stable, so, uh, but it's also highly toxic. So once ignited, it will be a good fertilizer uh, instead of uh, toxic uh, oxygen. God, we, right, but so that could be another story for solid, uh, propel uh, solid uh, propellant rockets. Uh, the only uh, mixed uh, uh, proportion is uh, launch feed of China is Long March 6. Mm. Long March 6, the core stage of the Long March 6 uses the liquid uh, propellants. Well, its four boosters are uh, solid ones, as you mentioned. Uh, but you know, uh, what Yensu has mentioned is called a hypergolic propulsion system, uh, which is different from the cryogenic propulsion system. In the cryogenic propulsion system, such as those used in the Long March 7 and 5, uh, the propellants are in lo very low temperature. But for this uh, Long March 2F, which, which uses a hypergolic uh, propulsion system, uh, the propellants, as Yensu mentioned, the UDMH and the NTO are worked in room temperature. So it's convenient to use. And also, moreover, you see that it do not need a very specific uh, ignition system. When the NTO meet with the UDMH, they can burn automatically. So that is why it is very convenient to use. But honestly speaking, the performance of this uh, uh, hypergolic uh, propulsion system is lower than the quadratic propulsion system. And also, uh, it is not uh, environmental friendly. Ah, I see. But uh, each of them has their own advantages. Exactly. So they're still all in use. Uh, right you know, now. that's the Long March 2 series, Long March 3 and Long March 5, all these use the uh, traditional hypergolic propulsion system. So we are already being, being very practical in using, utilizing these uh, launch vehicles. Until today, still, uh, most of the satellites were launched into orbit with these series. Indeed. Um, uh, practical is the key word here, yeah. cost effective. But right? in the future, the new generation launch vehicle, including uh, Long March 5, 6, 7, uh, will play a major role in China's space activities. Right, good to know, good to know. So, the three Taikonauts, this is live by the way, uh, the three Taikonauts are in the capsule still reading manuals, I guess, Mr. Xu? Yeah. Mm. Yes, I think they're still uh, going through the checklist. Mm. I think uh, these uh, will be uh, done throughout this whole process, even after liftoff, they're still mm. going to be holding this uh, thing, so mm. they will be seeing that everything is going smoothly. Mm. And that, that uh, yellow slash grey thing is, is the luggage, uh, as you earlier described, right? I, I would presume that these two uh, big bulky things behind, uh, behind the uh, commander is the parachute package. Right, no. right. Uh, it's not the parachute package, it's some, uh, some of the other luggage you mentioned for the mission itself, but some also uh, there are some, uh, some cargoes for the landing. For instance, if there is an emergency landing in a wild place, uh, they, need the, uh, uh, they need guns. And they need food, they need uh, other uh, water and, and I think so this uh, yellow part probably is the raft uh, that you're going to be used Quite right. when, when you land on, on water. Uh, splash down in yeah, the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And also, you know, that uh, the position of the center of the mass of the re-entry castle is also very critical for the safe landing. Uh, so it must be uh, well adjusted. So that it does not tumble when mm. it's uh, landing. Now we can see clearly the bottom of uh, the rocket the, with exactly. four engines, right? And uh, we're still waiting for the opening of the middle part of the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the rocket. And this is uh, the command and control center at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. 
uh, just on the just, just one uh, just, uh, bear with my curiosity I was always wondering why so many roles at these uh, commanding centers and each and everyone is so busy what's that all about it's so uh, has to be so precise that one one person for one specific duty Exactly. I was there, as I mentioned, four years before. So at each monitor, at mm. each seat, yeah. uh, there is a person in charge of a certain system. Yeah. For instance, for instance, as Yansong have, have already mentioned, we have the uh, telemetry, telecontrol, and the communication system. Mm. Uh, maybe several persons are in charge of this system. And some of in charge of the system communication with the other ground stations. And some of them are in charge of the status, monitoring the status of the mm. astronauts. So they can monitor the uh, biological parameters of the astronaut by the remote sensing data and also we have the uh, ground staff from the industry uh, who are in charge of the uh, monitoring the status of the Shenzhou space ship. Indeed, as we're talking about this I believe those ground staff are reaching another crucial mark to the launch that's almost yes that's right the 30 minute countdown yeah. to the launch and we can see the countdown clock is there okay we've already passed that mark so that means we're really close to the launch of uh, the Shenzhou 16 right now. And for more on that, let's cross live to our reporter Wu Lei, standing by at the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Hello, Center. Hello, Wu Lei, bring us up to date. Hello, Pandong. We are now at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. This is a command and information exchange center for many, uh, you know, flight uh, man missions as well as lunar and Mars exploration missions. And this time for the Shenzhou 16 mission, as you can see behind me, uh, the Shenzhou 16 crew are now ready uh, in the spaceship and all the ground team, uh, control team here are still standing by. And I heard many times of the voices of the Beijing copy, the main operator of the dispatch team here at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. They have been talking with different teams, including those uh, in different locations uh, uh, on Earth, and also uh, talking with uh, you know crew of Shenzhou 15 now in orbit. So uh, before the, uh, after lifting off, the, uh, the Beijing Aerospace Control Center will take control of the whole monitoring and commanding and information exchange missions with the other teams. So they will closely monitor the flight and other status of the spaceship and to uh, keep, uh, keep a close eye on the flight uh, status and make sure that the, the spaceship will dock with uh, below of the uh, you know Tianhe core module. So this time, uh, Shenzhou 16, uh, it, uh, for last time, it takes about 6.5 hours for the Shenzhou spacecraft uh, to dock with the Tianhe core module. And this time we will be here and standing here for uh, more information because we know that uh, every year uh, after the uh, China's uh, Tiangong space station has been operational, every year there will be two crewed missions uh, to uh, have a long-term operation of our space station. So every time, every six months, uh, there will be a rotation. And uh, today, after about 6.45 hours, uh, Shenzhou 16 crew will enter the Tiangong space station. They will have a historical, another historical meeting with the Shenzhou 15 crew. And the six astronauts or technonauts will stay in orbit for some days and then the Shenzhou 15 crew uh, are expected to back on Earth and uh, Shenzhou 16 will stay there for about six months. So the ground team here, control team, will keep a close eye on the latest about their flight. Pandem. Thank you very much, our reporter Wu Lei at the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center. Now you're watching live footage from the launch tower at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. As we can see, that the middle part of uh, the rocket is appearing now, right, gentlemen? Yes, uh, uh, what we see now is a video uh, from the camera mounted on the uh, rotational platform. So yeah, this particular see. shot is from the camera mounted on the launch tower uh, rather yes, than on the drone, rotational right? platform. Yeah. So you can see that the platform is leaving the payload fairing. Yeah. So you can see that there are uh, grid fins uh, folded on the payload fairing, uh, which right. is used to uh, stable the uh, emergency escape uh, system. Uh, uh, those are the, the folded the things are, are the, kind the of grid, a stabilizer. Grid fins. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, you fins, can call right. that stabilizers. Yeah, stabilizers. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 
And also, uh, you know, that's the uh, uh, the emergency escape system is composed not only the tower, but also we have rocket engines on the payload fairing. So you know that after liftoff, the first separation will be the jettisoning of the uh, emergency escape tower. After that, if anything wrong happened, we'll based on the rocket engine, the solid rocket engines on the payload fairing. Mm. Now we can see the whole rocket, a long march to F. Yeah. Mm. So the Long March 2F have a very long history. It is based on the Long March 2E rocket. Uh, the Long March 2E is the first long launch vehicle in China, which have uh, strapped on boosters, the side boosters. Uh, and the capability of the Long March 2E is also, uh, it is very interesting that first it was designed for commercial market for launching the satellite from other countries uh, because the capability can reach to 8.8 .8 tons so uh, it was used to improve and then into this Long March 2F launch vehicle uh, in 1990s. And the capability of the Long March 2F is different because it has two versions. One is used for launch this uh, Shenzhou spaceship which has an emergency escape system so the uh, capability is about 8.1 uh, metric tons. Indeed, and we can see that white blue building uh, a little bit far away from the yeah, launch that's, that's the vehicle, assembly. Uh, vehicle assembly building, yes. VAB. And once assembled, the rocket, uh, the combination to be precise, will be uh, transported to the launch tower through... Uh, yeah, 1.5 kilometers away. Right. And it is very interesting, you know, that's uh, Shenzhou 7 and together with the Long March, uh, Long March 2F Y17 launch vehicle is in this building now, Shenzhou 17. Oh, right. Yes. So uh, this uh, combination of the Shenzhou 17 and the Long March 2F Y17 launch mm. vehicle is used as a backup of this Shenzhou 16. Well, talking about redundancy, right? Yeah. Sure. So yeah. it's a good picture that you can see the vertical assembly tower and the reel that in between the launch pad and right. the tower. So that is uh, what we call a triple rip vertical to uh, frozen, what we call frozen, the technical parameters of the, of the rocket. So it's, if you vertically assemble the rocket, it, vertically launching is the uh, theoretically uh, less troubleshooting status for the rocket itself. Mm. Yeah. And the, the diameter of the uh, uh, payload fairing is about uh, 3.8 meters. Mm. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, there is another version of the Long March 2F, uh, which have a larger payload fairing with a diameter of 4.2 meters, which is used to launch the uh, Tiangong-1 and the Tiangong-2 space laboratories. Mm. So it has two versions. Because you know that uh, in that missions, we don't need to uh, ensure the safety of the astronauts. It's unmanned. So uh, some of the emergency escape systems are emitted, so the uh, capability of the launch vehicle can reach to 8.6 metric tons. Right. But interestingly, this is the only thing that is launched from Jiuquan for the, for, the, for, the for, the uh, for the space station. The rest of the segments, including the cargoes, the Tianke, the Wentian, and Mengtian, are all launched from Hainan uh, site. Is that uh, the same story to Tianzhou uh, cargo vessel? Exactly. Right. Yes. All of these are uh, uh, station construction as well as the cargoes are from Hainan uh, launch site. Uh, and the latitude of this Jiuquan Satellite Strong Center is about uh, 40 degrees. Mm. So that is the reason why we choose the inclination of our Tiangong space station. Inclination means that the angle between the orbital plane of the Tiangong and the equator. Uh, so the, uh, we choose uh, uh, 41.5 uh, degrees as the inclination of our orbit. Mm. Uh, this is a main re major reason because the latitude of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center is about 40 degrees. And also there are other advantages. As we have already said, uh, the climate of the Jiuquan Satellite Center is uh, very dry here. Dry. So um, yeah. in most of the days, uh, the weather is fine. Uh, and also you know that uh, along the trajectory of the Long March 2F, if anything wrong happened, in most cases, the uh, emer emergency landing will happen in the mainland of China. So that will be easy for the rescue teams. Hmm. Now, speaking to CGTN, former NASA astronaut Donald Thomas shared his thoughts on China's space development program and explains why everyone works as a team in space. China's space industry has changed so much in the last three years. Um, what have you been looking at? Yeah, I've been carefully watching the Chinese space program probably for the last 10 years. When the U-2 rover was on, on the moon, uh, that's when I started watching, and I've just watched the growth of it. 
and, and the accomplishments have amazed me. Um, particularly Changa 5, bringing back some lunar soil, you know, totally successful mission. And I've watched the, the manned space flight program has been so rapid that, that has really impressed me how, how quickly uh, they've developed in building of the Tiangong space station. On the ground, there are geopolitical tensions. Will that affect international cooperation in space? I'm all for peaceful purposes of space. And, and that's what I want to see. I, I've seen the competitive part of space during the space race. I've seen the cooperative part. And I like, I prefer the cooperative. Because even though we have political differences down here on Earth, in space, we, we work together and we have friendships. Uh, we've been working, we, the United States, have been working with the Russians for uh, 30 years or more, you know, on the International Space Station. And even though politically on the ground we are hitting heads, in space, we're a team. Now, this is the live footage from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, the weather reading here. And uh, also a little bit more updates from uh, the international uh, attention. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, says China's space program, I'm quoting now, is far more advanced than most people realize. Musk made a remark in response to a post on Twitter by Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. In a tweet, Hadfield cited Wu Weiren, chief designer of Chinese lunar exploration program, who forecast a Chinese taikonaut on the moon by the year 2030. So, gentlemen, China's lunar program. So, um, the timeline is quite clear now. It, it's by the year 2030. So, hopefully, it will be a little bit earlier than that, maybe? Hopefully. I mm. think uh, Professor Yang has mentioned that we have developed a new generation capsule that is capable of maintaining containing six to seven astronauts at one time. And also we have launch vehicles and capabilities. Uh, there are many means to go to, uh, to the moon. Uh, as the uh, American astronaut mentioned about the, uh, the Chang'e missions, uh, we are taking samples back to Earth. That is a, just a miniature uh, uh, process of the manned mission because if you can take samples back to Earth, um, enlarge that, you can take a man, a man to, Earth, to, to the moon and back. So that is the whole demonstration process for the manned mission. And I, mm. I, I'm quite, quite confident that with the, the technologies of, you know, in, in orbit configurations and, and docking rendezvous, uh, the moon is not so far. Right, and obviously we need a larger rocket, right, Professor? Uh, Mr. Pandang, you know that yesterday uh, during the press conference of the Shenzhou 6 mission, Mr. Lin Xiqiang mentioned that we will walk on the moon before 2030. Mm. That is very, very exciting news. Yeah. So we confirm the schedule. Uh, you know that uh, we are confident about this because you know that, uh, as we've already discussed, uh, many of the technologies used on the new generation launch vehicle and the new generation spaceship are based on the current spacecraft. Uh, for instance, the five diameter uh, launch vehicle, uh, you know, that's the core module, uh, sorry, you know, you, you, you know, the core stage of the Long March 5 uh, is with a diameter of five meters. So uh, it means that if we use this five meter diameter, we can use most of the infrastructure utilized for the Long March 5 series uh, in this manufacturing of the Long March 10. So that will be uh, one, one of the very important uh, advantage of this developing this uh, lunar launch vehicle. Moreover, you see that the currently, as we have already discussed, the new generation launch vehicle, uh, Long March 567, use, use the rocket engine called YF-100 series, uh, which have a thrust about 120 times. So this engine is also improved uh, with the technologies that it can be smaller. And with this improvement, seven engines can mount it on the five diameter stage. So it can have a very large thrust. And if we mount three these kind of five diameter uh, core stage together, it will form a new launch vehicle with a liftoff mass of more than uh, 200 and uh, 100 metric tons and with a liftoff uh, thrust about uh, 2,000 and 700 uh, metric tons. So uh, this will be big enough to send a spacecraft to the moon with a mass more than 27 metric tons. Mm. So with two these kind of launches, we can send the spaceship to the moon 
and the lunar module to the moon,、mm. and they will dock on the lunar、uh, lunar orbit, and then conduct a walk、mm. on the moon. And、uh, also on Monday after that press conference announcing China's、uh, lunar program timeline, I also see that China's Man Manned Space Authority have uh, uh, opened to. To basically open to the whole society,、uh, calling for designs of a lunar rover, right? Yes, I think、um, uh, lunar rovers are what we call it probably robotic missions.、Uh, as we have already uh, uh, seen in the Chang'e mission, we have from Chang'e one all the way to Chang'e five, and that will continue to Chang'e six and seven. That has already been approved by the State Council、uh, for implementation. So the Chang'e mission is the prelude of the manned mission. And、uh, the, that design of、uh, facilities needs to be,、um, you know, coherent with the manned mission in the future.、Mm. Um, what we indeed. Now let's get back to Earth a little bit and focusing on、uh, the rocket. Another crucial mark is about to come up, I believe, as the Taikonauts are still preparing for the launch. It's about fifteen minutes. Yes, we're approaching the fifteen-minute countdown to the launch. We can see the countdown clock at the command center. Now it's the 15-minute countdown. We've passed that crucial mark, so we can see now the launch tower is fully opened.、Yep. I can still see that、uh, the rocket is still held by some kind of arms, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly.、Mm. So you can see、uh, still some、uh, some arms are very close to the fuselage of、mm. the、uh, core stage. And let's take a closer look at the site and let's cross live to our reporter Sun Yat standing by. At Very close to be to the launch tower. So yeah, bring us up to date. Hey there, Pendant. Again, we are 1.5 kilometers、uh, from that launch complex, and we'll see、um, the rocket itself. It's almost free of all its tethers, all its link to the、uh, ground, and right now it's almost standing free. And that means it's almost ready to go. As you said, we are minus 15 minutes.、Uh, 15 minutes from that launch, we heard the、uh, zero commander say all of those things, including he's asking all the people、uh, to evacuate from. That launch area, and we've seen cars, the final、uh, batch of cars, getting away from the launch pad. It means we are really, really close、um, to the launch. And、uh, we've been talking to、uh, experts from the rocket system, from the spaceship system. Everything is ready. Everything is set. But even though the people have been evacuated, actually, not everything can be moved away so close from the launch pad. And now I have actually a small viewing tip for you.、Um, now, fifty. Meters, just 50 meters from that launch pad, there is a tree,、um, and for the last 25 years, it has withstood. Fires with the burns from the rocket launch, and every time, every year afterwards, it is reborn. And people here from the launch center say this really showcased the tenacity, the spirits of this launch center, really. Also of China's manned space development, that tenacity that they will also carry on into their future missions. So, in a few minutes,、uh, in 15 minutes, actually, if you can take your eyes off the Taikonauts, if you can take your eyes off the rocket and the spaceship, go look for that tree. But for now, everything here, from what we see, what we've heard, they are ready, they are set for the launch, and we will wait for that and see it with you, Pendang. Thank you very much, our reporter Sun Ye at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. So, gentlemen, we can see that a convoy of vehicles are now leaving the launch、uh, launch tower、uh, site. That means it's we're really in the final stage to the launch, right? We must But, count each of the person are not missed. Right. So that is very, very important for、mm. the ensure not only the safety of the astronauts but、yeah. also ensure safety of our ground staff. So all those technicians, ground staff,、uh, assistants we see earlier helping the、uh, uh, taikonauts or checking out the equipment there, they have all left. Yeah. Fifteen minutes and one point five kilometers is that's the clearance、uh, of the launch,、mm. and also there are bunkers underneath.、Uh, there are some assistants helping the astronauts for the final preparation. They will leave, I think, just shortly before five minutes.、Uh, to, these are last people. They will be hiding in the bunker. They will、mm. not leave the scene. There、so、will be no time to, to travel no one point five kilometers from away. Yes. Right. So they will、uh, they will hide in the bunker. But that is the whole process. The personnel will leave fifteen minutes just before the launch. Right.、Uh, you can see that the、uh, the two astronauts is still reading the manual. Right. Now we're. About 11 minutes to 
the launch of the Shenzhou 16. You can, and they're confirming the uh, yeah, estimated uh, ignition time, right? Yes, what we call this is a zero launch window. Okay. Uh, because it has a very strict requirement, because this launch is not an independent one. The object, the, the destination will be the, uh, the Tiangong Space Station. So the basic requirement is to that when the uh, Shenzhou spaceship come into orbit, it must be in the same orbital plane with the Tiangong Space Station. So this is raised a very strict requirement to our launch vehicle. So we mastered this zero launch window technology on the Shenzhou 8 mission during, uh, in, uh, in uh, 20, uh, 2011. Uh, but today, we furtherly improved the technology from the zero launch window to narrow launch window. Be because you know that we have some uh, design margin. So the capability of the launch vehicle is uh, stronger than needed. So we can use this design margin to expand the launch vehicle from within one second to several seconds. So this is another improvement from the zero launch window to the narrow launch window. Well, it has to, it, every second matters in space program, right? Because for common people like me, it's just, you know, just a, just a click of uh, the Earth clock's arm. But it, it will make whole difference in space, right? It's quite critical. You know, that uh, if the orbit is not accurate enough, you know, that the propellant in the Shenzhou spaceship is limited. So if the orbit is not uh, accurate enough, it will have no chance or miss the chance to dock with the Tiangong space station. They do have this kind of examples in other countries. You see, during the maiden flight of the Starliner, uh, spaceship made by Boeing because of it missed a very critical step of the uh, ignition, uh, so it missed a chance to talk with the uh, International Space Station. This do happened before. Mm. So uh, that is the reason why we must confirm the accuracy of the orbital parameters uh, before we announce mm. the success of the launch. Look at those uh, audience mm. at the other side, they're yes. waiting, uh, yeah, they're waiting for that uh, a big moment. Mm. Uh, you, you may notice that from this video, we can see that the, at this moment, still the, uh, the, the, the face window of the helmet is still open mm. now. So it is not necessary to protect themselves. But several, uh, several seconds before the launch, uh, the three astronauts will close their helmet. Uh, so this uh, IDA spacesuit can provide the second uh, protection to them, uh, to uh, the very uh, fatal vacuum condition. Right. So you're watching live footage from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. This is inside a capsule, the yeah. Shenzhou 16 spacecraft. The liftoff thrust of the Long March 2F is about 600 metric tons. So it's a very powerful launch vehicle. As mm. I have mentioned, the mass of the Shenzhou spaceship is about 8.1 metric tons. Mm. Uh, so uh, it is a very big uh, spacecraft uh, and the uh, the launch vehicle will work for about 10 minutes, uh, both the first and the second stage, uh, and then the, it will enter in the orbit, uh, maybe at the eastern coast of China, very close to Qingdao. Right, and uh, once they are in the outer space, they're waiting for that called fast docking process yeah, exactly. this time. Uh, what, what does fast docking mean? Mean. What is a slow docking anyway? Well, slow docking, normally uh, we had uh, docking that took uh, more than 20 hours. You know, once you, like uh, Professor Yang mentioned, that you have to have uh, the right inclination. That's the orbital plane. The inclination means that you're traveling on the right, right track. And then there's an element of the altitude. You have to go to the right altitude to catch up with the station. The station is traveling at 7.6 kilometers per second. That is very high speed. And you have to tra uh, travel in such a way that you have to maneuver and talk, talk with the station. That all the element plays very important. Oh, oh uh, gentlemen, I think we're, uh, the Shenzhou 15 crew yeah. are now watching the upcoming launch from the space they, station. They are watching the live coverage. Yeah, it's on your right, as, as, uh, on, on your screen's right side. And, uh, and uh, so we've got live footage from uh, two. Uh, so different places, yes. one's on Earth and one's in space. Traveling at 6.7.6. We can yeah. achieve this because we have the Tianlian data relay satellite. Okay, so now, it's, 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 it's a two-way two system, two right? Two-way video transfer. Yeah, yeah, so that's why we can see, um, see live streaming yeah. from inside the China space station right exactly. now. Exactly. So uh, I believe uh, with this, sorry, uh, the fast talking, uh, how long it will take this time? Uh, 
uh, roughly uh, a fast docking is uh, roughly six hours. Six hours. I think so uh, let's say in, in a little bit more than six hours, yes, I think this the, the, the three taikonauts inside the China yeah. space station will meet three new colleagues They'll meet for dinner. in space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the fast rendezvous and the docking raise a very strict uh, requirement uh, to the launch window. Uh, you know that several days before we just conducted an uh, uh, orbit maneuver to raise the orbit of the Tiangong space station. Mm. This to prepare, this can be recognized as a very important preparation for the today's launch mm. because you know that's uh, the fast rendezvous docking can only be uh, satisfied when the position the right position of the uh, the two spacecraft has uh, meet some requirements uh, so this is the reason we conducted the uh, orbit maneuver of the Tengu space station mm. and we just launched the Shenzhou 16 today this right. is the view you never see before because it's uh, used by the, uh, the drone, the the drone, drone to, yeah. to film. Yeah, yeah. From a very safe distance, right? Yeah, and you're watching live footage uh, from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch but we can have Center. A, this is the launch tower. It's fully open now. We can see the long march, the combination of uh, the long march 2F rocket yeah. and the Shenzhou 16 spacecraft. Oh. Now we're reaching, about to reach another crucial mark. T minus five, five minutes. Yeah, T minus, yeah, very, in a professional way. Five minutes to the launch. Right, we've passed the five minute countdown to the launch. T minus five. And, uh, so the, the launch will take place at 0931 Beijing time. That's 0131. GMT, yes, Professor. And the onboard computer of the Long March 2F uh, rocket will be in charge of the control of the whole vehicle after several seconds. So can we say it's kind of an uh, automated process? Yes, okay. uh, because you know but, that... But, 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 but human can intervene at any time. Uh, we, 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 we have the remote control system, but mm. at this moment, uh, you know, uh, maybe after several seconds, the onboard computer will be in charge of everything. Right. So you can see these two black holes by the newcomers. Those yes. are two windows right. uh, that, uh, that's uh, privileged to these two newcomers. The, okay. the commander does not see the window, but those okay. two, two new guys will see the window. But they, it's for the view, right? That's for the view, the view. Yes. But it's still black because of the outside is the fairing. Yeah. But once you, de uh, you, know, you, you uh, deploy the fairing, uh, they will see uh, the whole Earth. I mean. Oh, you, you see, look, they have already closed their helmet. Okay. Helmet. So I'm um, it close. It forms the all airtight three. seating. Airtight seating. Mm. Yeah. So it's a uh, you know another redundancy for safety purposes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because the cabin is already have a life support system because of the oxygens and temperatures all yeah. uh, adjusted. Now they're but holding but, hands. Yeah. The Working as a team. Control. Best wishes for this mission. I think it's the commander yeah. giving these two some courages. Yeah. <laughs> And, if you and the, command, the commander, Jing Haipeng, is 56 Pretty years so. old now, and the other uh, two colleagues of his 36. are all 36 yes. years old. So this is kind of a generational relay race in the China, 20 Chinese. Year, 20 year gap. Yeah, 20 year gap. But let's remember, Mr. Jing Haipeng made it very clear that there is no generational gap between yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when he mentioned this, <laughs> there is. <laughs> yeah. T uh, minus three minutes and counting. Yeah. Psychologically, right? Yes. Okay. Then I think the last Three minutes guy come down to the launch. last guy from the tower is already in the bunker. So everybody's yeah. clear from the tower. Yeah. Waiting for the big moment. The sky and next is you really can clear. See that the rotational arms will uh, uh, leave the uh, leave the vehicle. There's a still a red uh, reddish small arm that is still providing some mm. connections. Yeah, and connections. that arm uh, will, um, will, uh, will yeah. evacuate yeah. Uh, in, in last seconds, Just, maybe yeah. minutes. Yeah. Minute. Just because one, there are some plug-ins, uh, it, it will be uh, unconnected from the launch vehicle. Right. Oh, see, this can two, see. Yes. Okay. The reddish. Yeah, arms. this is the last remaining arms yeah, yeah. that's still this holding the rocket. Mm. And then when once these two leaves, you can see that the rocket is standing on four small pins. Mm. So that is, you know, the stability of the rocket. Mm. You have to, you know, keep its very central centralized mm. gravity. The, the cables on these arms are connected to the onboard computer mm. of the launch vehicle. You two gentlemen are already industrial veterans. Are you still excited about this? Because right now my heart is Every pumping Every time we faster. are nervous. Y you are? Yeah. Yeah. Every time? Every time we are yeah. nervous. You've seen this too much, I, I thought. Exciting and nervous. Right. The three Taikonauts are ready. The launch of the Shenzhou 16 manned space mission is imminent at the moment. 0931 is the launch time.
for this mission. You're watching live footage from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwestern China. This is live footage from inside the Shenzhou 16 spacecraft. The three Taikonauts are ready to go. It seems that the three crew members are much more calm than Earth. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, they're well trained. Yeah. One minute countdown to the launch. One minute countdown to the launch. And the arm will be open. Mm. Anytime. Yes. 50 seconds to the launch. See, it's sort of separated. Now, the rocket is in standalone mode, ready for launch and ignition. So at this stage, the rocket is on its own. The navigation is 30 seconds to yeah. go. So, this is a video from the drone. Never been seen this. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Lift off. Pitch over means that it has already changed its direction from vertical direction uh, to the to a certain wood. angle, right? We can yeah. we can also see that from yeah, yeah. a, a far to the, short... to the eastward. Yes. So this is the Shenzhou 16. So this is a video mount with uh, from the camera mounted on the core stage, right? And this is an infrared image. You are watching live footage on the launch of the Shenzhou 16 spacecraft to China Space Station. And the next uh, critical step will be the jettisoning of the emergency escape tower. Right. Again, this is infrared. We, we can see a clear an angle change, right? Yeah. So it's flying uh, eastward. So will there be still some adjustment of the angle uh, yeah. to the uh, forty-one point five degree, as uh, you earlier mentioned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm. the inclination. So this is mm. uh, you can see the two of the boosters. Uh, there are four in total, there are right? Four. Yeah. So this is there are two on this yeah, side. Yeah, just from one side. Yeah. You should be able to see it uh, when separation. Right. Yeah. So the uh, emergency is Cape Tower will be jettisoned soon. You can see some light sparks on the top of the rocket uh, when it's injected. Right. Yeah. And on the right side of the it's screen is the simulation. 3D, the uh, simulated, 3D simulation, simulation, but it is driven yeah. by the real data. The real data, of Which course. means that the position and the OK, the, okay jettison. Now, uh, the jettison of the escape tower. Yeah. And the next step will be separation of the four boosters. Right. Let's uh, wait Great. for those uh, step by step. Followed by separation of the fairing. The G forces mm. acting on the bodies of the astronauts are increasing. Mm. Mm. We can see the we can see the burning mark yeah. on, on yeah, the yeah, entrance, yeah. right? So the, 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 right now is really high into the atmosphere, okay. right? Okay, separate it. Okay, separation of the four engines. And the core stage is also separated. Core stage separated. So this is again the infrared image. We can see the very clear the mm. four boosters and the first stage. Mm. They've already separated from. The now it's already uh, on the working of the second stage. Second stage. As I mentioned, it has one main engine and four vernier engines. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they, 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 they feel so comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they're talking. Oh. I think uh, they've done the max Q, which is the maximum uh, gravity. They've so already they, done that. Yeah, they've already done it. So yeah. you can see this is a camera from the video mounted on the second stage. Second and, stage. And this, this is a fairing. camera in the payload fairing. Mm. <laughs> and the next pay, uh, physic, uh, critical step will be the jettisoning of the payload fairing. Okay. It's, it's all done. It's jettisoned. Already done. Yeah. 
Now yeah. they can see the uh, sightseeing from the, outside, the window. Yes, yeah, they can see the outside. Yes. Yes. So are they out of the Earth atmosphere yes. right yes. now? Exactly. So can we say they're already in outer space? Yes. You're watching live footage from inside Shenzhou 16 spacecraft. The three Taikonauts are now in outer space, heading towards the China space station. On the left, uh, left side of the screen, uh, we can see the camera mounted still on the uh, on core stage. On core stage. Yeah. The second outside stage. the core stage. Yeah. Mm. So this is the working of the second stage of the Long March 2F mm. rocket vehicle. Still, the on the left of the screen is the infrared videos. Right. Uh. And the uh, second stage of the uh, Long March 2 have worked much longer than the first stage because it only uh, has one main engine uh, right. uh, with a thrust above the 80 tons. Mm. This is an image of the, stage, uh, the second stage uh, engine. Mm. The main engine of the second stage is fixed and you can see that the small engine on the left uh, on the left corner, mm. the small warning engine can change its direction to control the trajectory. Okay, but uh, the main engine is a fixed its angle. Yeah, for okay. propulsion purpose. Yeah, right. And usually we separate the payload fairing at the attitude of about 100 kilometers. Mm. Uh, so at this moment, uh, according to the uh, definition... Uh, now we can s see again, yeah. live streaming from inside the China Space Station. They are watching the live, yeah. live coverage. They're getting yeah. closer. They're getting closer and closer to their colleagues yeah. at this moment. And also on the uh, right bottom of the screen, we can see the 3D animation. Yeah. And also you can see the data link between the ground stations and the launch vehicle. OK, so three of them. Three, uh, yeah, yeah. From three ground stations. Yeah. Three ground stations. At this moment, mm. they're constantly changing. Right. So they are experiencing the... It's also a relay yeah. race between different uh, yeah. ground... They uh, have a relay. Yeah. Stream, yes. Uh, yes. And this is a video on the rear part of the second stage. Mm. It's, it's still working at this moment, it's right? It's still, still working. Burning. Mm. And the next uh, critical step will be the shutdown of the main engine. But oh, we, we, we can see the Earth, right? Yes. yes, it's very bright. So they're, they're now in outer space and, and the second stage engine is still at work. Uh, what's, what's the next stage aim? Uh, they're, they're, Adjusting the position angles or, or yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Uh, adjusting its trajectory. trajectory. Uh, you can see, although it is in daytime, mm. but the sky is black because mm. they were already in outer space yeah. in a vacuum condition. Yeah. So the rocket engine will take them to the right uh, velocity and right altitude right. Uh, and right orbit before there is a separation between the engine and the capsule itself. Mm. And then the, uh, the uh, final success will be uh, will be indicated by the deployment of the solar array. Right. Wow. They are very relaxed. Yeah. Yes. The Shenzhou 15 crew are relaxed and happily waiting for their colleagues. But we can also see that uh, the three Titan nods uh, in Shenzhou 16 spacecraft that they're also relaxed because they're well trained for this process. And so far, it's been a smooth process. Mr. Mr. Dr. Zhu Yang Zhu and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Gui Hai Chao, mm. uh, at this moment, they are already qualified to be an astronaut because they are already uh, above in. the common line. Mm. About, uh, about common the, line? Yeah. It's a, it's a professional is, uh, job. The, <laughs> uh, the altitude is 100 kilometers. Okay. So that is the uh, artificial uh, definition of the border of the outer space. Right. The final frontier, right? Yep. Yeah. Named under von Kármán, the yeah, right. The renowned scientist. So, what about staying time? What if you know someone just passes out Mars and re-enters? I think okay. the main engine shut down. Second, Second stage. stage engine is now shut down. No, the uh, the still the four Vernier engines are working. Okay, oh, the main engine. Main, main engine engines yeah, have shut down. shut down, which mm. means they have reached the, uh, the velocity and the altitude already. Mm. Yeah. And the Vernier engine will do some uh, very precise adjustment of mm. the trajectory. Still, we're watching live footage from the camera mounted on this second stage. Yeah. This is live stream from outer space. Yeah. Yes. And after shutdown of the Vernier engines, uh, next will be the separation of the launch vehicle and the Shenzhou spaceship. Mm. On the left you can see the folded, folded uh, solar array. Uh, this is the a stack of the solar array mm. that has been folded in 
on the Shenzhou uh, spaceship. So at this moment, uh, the cabin is still powered by batteries or, or what? Yes, batteries. It's powered by, by batteries. By storage batteries. Storage batteries. Yes. And once uh, the solar panel is opened, then it can generate, generate power by itself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can see yeah, the ground the stations are still animation. tracking, yeah. uh, tracking the, uh, the 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 flight. Yeah, from the uh, 3D animation at the bottom mm. right, you can see still that the four body engines are still working. Right, to adjust the, the trajectory. So when Professor Yang mentioned the Verling engine, this is the process they take full advantage of the launch vehicle, because the uh, Shenzhou itself has own its own adjustments uh, system, but it's to take full advantage of the launch vehicle competence, and then after separation. Uh, the Shenzhou is on itself for adjustment. Oh, they're, they're still definitely watching in the same position. So yes, they're relaxed, but uh, they're still anxious to 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 they will meet their see the success afternoon. of the launch at least, yeah. right? Yes. Well, we are also still anxiously waiting for that moment. Okay, shut down. Separation. Now the. Engine has left the uh, spacecraft. Yes. So the spacecraft is on its own now. Uh, and the next step will be unfolding of the solar panels. Right. That means the launch vehicle has done its job. It has now completely left the spacecraft. The uh, job is done. The March 2F is done. Mm. It's, it's and next, we will uh, measure the precise orbital parameters of the Shenzhou spaceship. And once it was confirmed that it is accurate enough, we can announce the success. Right. Now astronauts are feeling microgravity environment. They mm. can throw up their pin and mm. they're floating. Mm. Uh, we just heard the voice, uh, the Changjiang 3, which means the uh, space tracking ship. Yeah. Now, on the left hand side are the Shenzhou 16 crew, and on the right side of the screen are the Shenzhou 15 crew. They're about to meet soon, once the docking is completed. And they will uh, do a handover, right? Yeah, in orbit. Yeah, and uh, uh, eventually the Shenzhou 15 crew will go back to Earth. Prepare a meal for six. <laughs> <laughs> you just heard that, right? Yes. That's crucial for, uh, for a long trip, right? You know that uh, Mr. Deng Qingming from the Shenzhou 15 crew is mm. already a grandfather. Right. Yeah. His daughter is also working in our space field. It's also a generational thing. Yeah. Now we're looking at the solar panel that's ready to be deployed. Mm. We can see clearly the Earth is, yes. now for, at least for us, it's on the right-hand side of the Shenzhou 16 spacecraft. Yeah. So uh, I believe this is a video from the camera mounted on yeah. the propulsion module of our Shenzhou spaceship. So you can see the solar panels. So this camera will be, be there, right? And you know that transferring uh, signals uh, with videos need a very high capacity. Is it more constrained by bandwidth or other exactly. transmission? So, so there are coordinations uh, between NERS and the ITU uh, to get the compatible uh, radio frequency. Uh, now the solar panel is unfolding. Unfolding very slowly. Great. Now it's fully unfolded from what we can see. But we still need confirmation from ground control. The Shenzhou 50 crew inside the China Space Station are watching closely. They've been watching in almost the very same positions, right? Now Beijing is in Solar panel unfolded as planned. I just heard confirmation from the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center. So the Beijing Center has taken over. Now the command has changed from the Jiuquan Satellite Ground Center to the Beijing Flight Control Center. Mm. But still, and it will be so. Yeah, but still, the, rest the, of the, the announcement mission. of the success will be in the Jiuquan Satellite Ground Center. Great. The antenna for the data relay satellite has already been unfolded. Mm. And the solar panel, I just heard the solar panel is working 
Normally, we have a, uh, we just heard voice that the driver we call that Sada uh, work very normally. Uh, the solar array drive assembly called Sada work normally. That's the arm of the uh, the uh, the solar array. Yeah, you have so many abbreviations and jargons in your profession. Is this is a kind of a NASA left tradition? <laughs> the Sada has been used widely in the in the community. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's report the space tracking ships uh, called Changjiang, which means the Yuan Wang mm. uh, space tracking ship has already sent the measurements of the orbital parameters. Mm. But that means that it's already in the uh, in the Pacific, Pacific Ocean. Yes, exactly. It's above the Pacific. It's outside China already. Mm. Two. Two teams. One's expecting to meet the other, and the other is uh, watching closely on the uh, successful launch, the announcement of a successful launch. So we're still in, kind of, technically speaking, we're still in the launch process, right? We're, until that announcement of a successful launch. As I mentioned, we must confirm that the orbital parameters is accurate enough. Only at this circumstances, we can announce it is a success. Mm. Now they can open their helmets now. Yeah, because yeah. So the they have the first monitor the environment of the atmosphere. Mm. They do have what we call a, a life support system, mm. environmental control and life support system inside the cabin. Mm. You see the right side, the window is very bright. Yeah. So uh, they're facing sunlight, yeah. basically. There's or the reflection of sunlight the from the earth. Reflection of the earth, right. yes. On the other side, it's, it's also quite bright. Mm. I think it's. Um, they can, they can enjoy a good view after they uh, lift the helmet. Right. Uh, you, you can see Mr. Zhu uh, Yangzhu on the far side. Yeah. Uh, just uh, near his seat, there is a button to cut the propellers. Oh, really? Uh, where's yeah. the button exactly? Uh, the button, uh, during the landing, uh, Mr. Zhu Yangzhu will be in charge of cutting the parachute. I see, because he's the flight engineer, right? Uh, no, because yeah. he is zero two. Oh, zero two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gen 北京, Professor, you've got your parameters now. What's your reading? Uh, well, uh, according to the announcement of the commander in Beijing Flight Control Center, the optical uh, uh, parameters are very uh, uh, accurate. I believe that next uh, the commander in the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center uh, will announce the result of the mm. launch. And I also heard readings on the uh, apogee and perigee. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and why, why is that? that? That's kind of an, an crucial indicators for a right Very, orbit. very crucial. Mm. Actually speaking, the uh, perigee and apogee it must be lower than the our space station. Uh, uh, according to the feature of the orbital dynamics, the lower it is, the faster it rotates. So it is a chasing vehicle, chase the, uh, our Tiangong space station. Uh, within six hours, they will meet their colleagues. Mm. So six the, hours, uh, a fast stalking process. Yeah. Yeah. So we can hear the apogee uh, and the perigee is uh, 360 uh, something. The station is 370 something. So that is you know, below, just below the station that can catch up at the right point. Mm. <coughs> now we're waiting for the official announcement of the result of the launch of the Shenzhou 16 mission. Officials, experts and comrades. According to the flight data and report from Beijing Aerospace Center, the Long March 2 Y-16 carrier rocket has sent Shenzhou 16 manned spacecraft to the preset orbit. The solar panel has been unfolded successfully and is functioning well. I now declare the launch of Shenzhou 16 mission a complete success.
Now, this just uh, came in. China has uh, just officially announced the successful launch of the Shenzhou 16 manned spacecraft with uh, three Taikonauts on board. For more on that, let's cross live to our reporter Wu Lei at Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center. Wu Lei, now the Beijing Center has taken over the flight control. Uh, bring us up to date. Hello, Pandeng. Actually, uh, this is my first time here uh, in Beijing Aerospace Control Center witnessing the launch of the Shenzhou 16. Last time when Jing Haipeng was in Zhouquan Satellite Launch Center uh, in his third flight in 2016, I was there. And this time it's his fourth time to space and it's quite different for, I think, for him and also for me as a reporter. And I just, uh, I was here and uh, I can hear what uh, the three Takonas are talking about in their spaceship. They said, enjoy the flight and uh, the view out there in space was quite spectacular. And so here this time, the Shenzhou uh, 16 spaceship will conduct a automated fast uh, rendezvous and dock with the uh, blow part of the Tianhe core module in about 6.5 hours. And uh, we will wish them very successful and safe trip. And actually, uh, last week when I was in Norway uh, reporting the uh, first global space conference on climate change, I talked with the president of the International Astronautical Federation, uh, Mr. Clay Morwick and he mentioned that uh, he's looking forward to more uh, international collaboration aboard the China's Tiangong Space Station. So every year uh, there will be two crewed missions in Tiangong and in the future more international astronauts will visit the Tiangong Space Station and more international collaboration projects also expected to conduct in the Tiangong Space Station. So we're really looking forward to the more international collaboration in the Tiangong Space Station. So here I will be uh, wait, uh, waiting for the successful rendezvous and dock with the Tiangong Space Station and we'll bring you more about the Shenzhou 16 space ship and crew. Back to you, Pandeng. Thank you very much. Our reporter Wu Lei at Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center. And uh, this is official now. The launch of the Shenzhou 16 manned spacecraft is a success announced by China's manned space authority. Now, uh, gentlemen, uh, what's your view, uh, review of the whole process of the launch of uh, the Shenzhou 16? Because uh, for me as an uh, ordinary viewer, I, I, it, it was faster, much faster than I thought. And um, I think it was quite smooth. What's your professional insight? Uh, well, you know, that this is, uh, as you have mentioned, it is a routinary launch, and we've already very been very practical, as you mentioned. You know, that the Shenzhou 16 uh, spaceship has the same specification in uh, technology parameters uh, comparing its former uh, spaceships. So we've already very uh, practical, but still we have some improvement. And today's launch, uh, the more meaningful thing is that we have our first civilian astronauts in orbit. Uh, Mr. Uh, Professor uh, Gui Hai Chao. Yes, and also you can see during the whole procedure, the three crew members are full of confidence and they are very relaxed and even have joke with each other. Mm -hmm. So this uh, shows that they have been well trained and they are also very confident, I believe, that to uh, accomplish their missions in orbit. Uh, what's your take? Well, I think uh, once you see the lift of the, ro uh, the rocket, uh, you see the stability of the rocket itself. Uh, it represents days and months and years of effort of the, by the scientific community. Uh, the launch vehicle is very stable at this moment, and we can see success rate is almost 100% uh, for the uh, uh, space uh, travel. It becomes very easy for us to see that uh, it's, it's like a daily life. We could take it for granted, but it's, it's effort after effort, tra tra training after training and checking after checking. Uh, but as also, as Professor Yang mentioned, this is a historic moment. Uh, civilians can travel to space. Uh, even though he was selected from more than 2,000 people, but still you have a chance. I mean, every people have a chance to go to space. This is the indication of this mission, I think. Right, Professor Yang. Um it's time to bring out that technicality. Glasses. We know in daily life, uh, Dr. Uh, Gui Hai Chao uh, wears glasses, but uh, at the, during the launch period, he's not. Ah. Uh, so, but uh, maybe eventually, uh, when he's in the China Space Station, he will wear that glasses again, because uh, earlier, the common thought was uh, that short-sightedness is kind of a barrier for people to go into space. Uh, maybe that's uh, not the case right now? 
Uh, that depends. Uh, mm. If you are, uh, if you want to be a pilot or a commander, uh, you must not be uh, have this near sight eye because uh, in emergency case cases you must pilot in the ship. So uh, in this case, uh, you, you, your eyesight must be in a very perfect condition. Well, but for the uh, payload experts, it's a different thing because he is not in charge of or have the duty of piloting the ship. So uh, during the launch and also during the re-entry, it is not necessary to have a very good. Uh, but you know that as you have mentioned, it is correct. At this stage, he must uh, take off his uh, eyeglasses because you know uh, during the launch, we only not not, not only will experience the g forces about uh, more than three times of your own mass, but also we will have very intensive vibration. Uh, so there may be some uh, interference between your eyeglasses and the helmet. So that is the reason why during this case, uh, in this period, you must take off your eyeglasses. Mm. But when you are in orbit, because it is already in uh, in microgravity environment that do not have much uh, uh, vibration so uh, you, you can wear your eyeglasses in your daily task and even during the EVA. Right, is this the common practice in the uh, international uh, aerospace in industry for other uh, payload experts, uh, Mr. Xu? Well, I don't think uh, there are any uh, you know, international players that have uh, a glass issue. I think uh, in the past we don't see any any people wearing glasses. Uh, this is one of the first time that uh, we're witnessing this. But I think uh, uh, you know, I, uh, with the helmet, you have humidity issues, also with uh, other vibrations and, and uh, motion issues. That uh, you know, eyeglasses can be a danger. But uh, once you're in the uh, life support system in the station, you're like uh, a daily life in your in your uh, Earth environment. So mm. that does not affect too much on your. Uh, eyeglass wearings. Yeah, let's wait and see if uh, Dr. Gui will bring out his uh, uh, a pair of glasses when he's actually in the China Space Station. Yep. Now let's get more updates. The China Man Space Program's Chief Taikonaut System Designer, Huang Weifen, recently sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, our reporter Zheng Yibing. During the interview, she provided insightful information about crew members participating in the Shenzhou 16 mission. Well, thank you so much for receiving our interview. We noticed the three members of the Shenzhou 16 crew that are composed of China's first and third cohorts of Taikonauts. Could you please introduce the crew from your perspective and what do you expect from them? The Shenzhou 16 crew is a brand new combination. It is our country's first crew consisting of three types of Taikonauts. They are also a combination of the first and the third cohorts of Taikonauts. Commander Jin Haipeng is an experienced aerospace pilot with three previous flights, demonstrating excellent skills and superb physical and mental quality. Now, he is 57 years old and is very dedicated in pursuing his dream of flying. I see his love, duty and responsibility for this job. So, I am quite moved by his professionalism. Two other Taikonauts are from the third cohort, namely Flight Engineer Zhu Yang Zhu and Payload Specialist Gui Hai Chao. They are new and their training time is relatively short, for just more than two years. But they have very extensive and specialized aerospace background. And they have dreamed of flying when they were teaching in college, as well as when they were students. Now their dream is within reach. The three Taikonauts have been working hard and motivating themselves over the years. They are very self-disciplined and have great perseverance in achieving their goals. I believe that they will be able to leverage their respective strengths, support one another, and successfully complete the mission. Well, gentlemen, talking about the Taikonauts at this time, uh, we cannot overemphasize the significance of the first uh, civilian background uh, Taikonaut uh, entering the China Space Station. This is also, I believe, the first time for the China Space Program as a whole. So talking about training, um, would, be, would it be more challenging for a civilian to uh, take such intensive and extensive training? Uh, 
you know that although the criteria for the selection of astronauts uh, do have some uh, lower than before, uh, but still it is a very tough task for them. For instance, uh, their survival training in wild places, uh, actually speaking in the uh, Badan Jilin Desert, uh, it is a really t very tough experience. How tough can it be? Just uh, they, give us an they idea. They must stay there for uh, two days, and also there are only limited without water, any outside help, without uh, w w without a sufficient supplies. So even they, they need to drink their urine. Mm. Uh, so you can see how tough it is. Uh, moreover, you can see that uh, they must uh, experience the not only the normal. Uh, procedure as we uh, uh, witnessed today, but also uh, the possible and abnormal procedure. For instance, the G-forces. The G-forces usually in normal cases will be uh, 3.6 uh, times uh, of your own mass, but in uh, emergency uh, splashdown and emergency uh, 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 escape from the launch vehicle, it may up to about 8G. So they must uh, uh, be adapted of this uh, this environment. Moreover, you see, if they want to be a pilot, they must not only can be uh, can survive at this 8G, but also they must have the ability to do the right choice uh, during this 8G G forces. Mm. So you can see how tough it is although they are not the pilot, not the commander, but still they have a lot of trainings. Moreover, you see that the, uh, although you know that Mr. Uh, Gui Hai Chao is a professor from the Beihang University, but still, uh, you know that many, I believe many experiments uh, on board the Tengu Space Station will not be his profession field. So they must have a very uh, broad range of knowledge and also they must have the capability to handle everything, uh, especially in the uh, abnormal case. So talking about a broad range of uh, knowledge, this time, uh, according to Monday's official press uh, conference, uh, even general relativity and the origin of human life are in the task list of researchers uh, this time. How can it be so broad and deep in terms of scientific research uh, tasks? Mr. Well, I think Xu? like general, general uh, law of rel uh, relativity is, uh, uh, is done by a time difference and distance difference. So the, it, the space is the perfect environment to do that. Uh, as you also mentioned that the professor from Beihang University, he has uh, scientific backgrounds in many fields. And also remember that the onboard facilities, testing uh, facilities, uh, like combustion chambers, cryogenic uh, uh, testing facilities, biological uh, test chambers, all of these are designed by the scientists. And the scientists speak different languages uh, in comparison with the pilots. Pilots do trainings, uh, disorientations, um, uh, many Gs, uh, uh, centrifuge uh, testings. But the scientific community, they do speak different languages. And it's easier for scientists to be on board to communicate with the scientific community to study and to report on the scientific results and even to operate the facilities. Uh, so this is more efficient, uh, more practical way uh, to do this in outer space with the, there is a microgravity environment and also radiation, radioactive uh, environment and also exposed to outer space environment. Okay. All of this can be done in outer space. All right, and this is clearly a good start for China in this particular field because uh, of course Dr. Gui Hai Chao is the first uh, to be a payload expert into the China Space Station and I believe uh, China has already selected four of such uh, payload experts uh, from thousands of uh, applicants. Um, why China has been chosen uh, payload experts? Because, is it because um, experiments will be getting more and more in the future? I think it's more complex, more scientific oriented. I, I think this brings back to the uh, whole purpose of the station. We launched the station not for launching itself, not to, you know, to build it just for building it. We're building it for operation and for applications. And space environment can be done, can, can do many things that we cannot even imagine on Earth. Uh, the microgravity environment can, can, you know, for example, if you have a combustion uh, uh, experiments, you do not see the flame that is going up. You can see a ball of flame that is going around. So these different environment can, can bring uh, dr drastic different results in material science, biologies, even uh, medicines. So I think these experts chosen is to do their specific uh, areas and domains to bring uh, the innovation uh, and uh, creativity of the Chinese uh, scientific community so using the platform of the space station.
after all, it's a national lab in space. Now, gentlemen, let's get more updates. Earlier, the chief operator for the Shenzhou 16 launch mission at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center talked to CGTN on preparations for the launch and, re, uh, and for com reasons for confidence ahead of the mission. After the joint rehearsals involving all systems in the past few days, our flight combination of rocket and spacecraft has entered the final refueling process. All systems of this manned launch mission are coordinated and in line with each other, and we needed to do a thorough recheck on all plans to make sure that we could perfectly complete this mission. Well, this is the first manned launch mission for China Space Station since the station entered its application and development stage. So as the operator for this whole mission, what's your feeling now? I think we are more confident and steadier. This is the general feeling. Why? The confidence comes from two things. One is that our product, the rocket, and the spacecraft have higher quality and reliability. Second, our team has become more professional. We are now at the stage where, from the testing and launch point of view, we have forged a professional team of people who are dedicated to doing tests and launches. So, uh, we've already talking about a successful launch and the fast docking, and uh, next stage it should be the uh, uh, handover of, uh, of the mission between the Shenzhou 15 crew and the Shenzhou 16 crew. What's the r common procedure here, Professor? Uh, well, you know that uh, during the uh, docking of the two spacecraft, the Tiangong Space Station and our Shenzhou uh, 16 uh, manned spaceship, uh, if anything wrong happened to the automatic docking system, they will switch to manual docking mode, and uh, Commander Jing Haipeng will piloting the ship to dock with our space station. After that, you know that they will open the hatches, and then they will enter in the uh, our Tiangong Space Station. You see, that this is supported by the uh, what we call the uh, environmental control and the life support system because we have two independent system in the Tianhe One core module and in the Wen Tian module. So uh, the first steps, you know, that's to ensure the safety of three crew members in outer space for half a year is not an easy thing. Uh, there are so many uh, issues they must handle every day. So the first thing the, of the handle work to is to uh, tell the new crew the status of each system. For instance, the water recovery system, the urea processing system, the oxygen generation system uh, and so on. So uh, this is uh, first thing first uh, to ensure uh normal operation of the whole station and then they will hand over the scientific research works you know that's the as Yan Song has already mentioned there are more wider range of scientific research and uh, more uh, of these kind of research so some of the research cannot be completed within the period of one expedition team so it will hand over to another expedition team and it is the most efficient way to hand over their task face to face so uh, this will be their uh, also be their work and also at that, you know that uh, the Shenzhou 15 crew are also preparing for the return, and they will prepare some, uh, you know, that some scientific research results, especially some material made in outer space, and also some samples such as the uh, space medicine and uh, biological samples uh, to their Shenzhou 15 spaceship, and then uh, several days later they will undock from the front docking port. But this time it will be very interesting, you know, that after the undocking of the Shenzhou 15, the Shen the Tianzhou 5 cargo ship we will redock to this front docking port. And at this moment, we will make another record because uh, at this moment, we also have six spacecraft connected together and the, Tianzhou, to the two Tianzhou cargo ships are much heavier uh, than the Shenzhou space ship. So the total mass, as we have already discussed, will be more than uh, 110 metric tons. So another record. Uh, right, and so basically uh, the China space station will eventually turn into a hub. It's not only a one-stop station, but it's kind of a hub to uh, host uh, all different kinds of uh, space uh, crafts. And what about its uh, serving capability, uh, Mr. Xu? After all, you are the one who caught that crucial message, uh, meal for six. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, serving capability and uh, uh, maximum capability of, uh, of, uh, of the core module. I think the uh, the crew were joined uh, by their six people, and they're they're going to be using the life support system to support all six people on board. Uh, that including uh, the atmosphere, the air, the oxygen, the water supplies, 
and all the uh, recycled parts and also it's a test and challenge for the uh, spacecraft itself and also uh, as, uh, as Yang mentioned that we'll have be having handovers over the uh, uh, materials including the, the counting of the log for the uh, things on board and also the new arrival things uh, by, the, by the crew and also by the what we call it the, the, the service module and, and uh, the orbit module have brought many things on board. So all of these will be uh, put together and we'll, we ha a, have a, a half year handover a, a logbook uh, to the new crew and then they will continue the mission. I think uh, the station is not only built for the uh, survival of the three astronauts but also for scientific purpose. And as we <coughs> have just heard yesterday, that we're going to go to the moon by 2030. That means we'll be using the platform to do man many experiments for outer space uh, exposures. For example, the lunar suit uh, and also the lunar landing facilities that can be exposed to outer space environment and all the also sustainable uh, facilities in outer space environment and, and microgravity environment. All of these uh, will be using the platform of the station as a step stone to go to the moon. So I think there, there are many things that we can do together uh, on board the, the main mission. Of course, the six people dinner has to be prepared for tonight after the quick rendezvous and docking. And then they will for continue. For the next several days, maybe. <laughs> yes, for yes. several days before yeah. the, the, the Shenzhou 15 crew leave the, uh, and come home in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Xu Yansong and uh, Professor Yang Yuguang there. And that's it for uh, this edition of a special coverage on CGTN and it's official now. The launch of the Shenzhou 16 spacecraft is a success. And um, I'm Panjung in uh, Beijing. Do stay tuned, but we leave you with the highlights of this successful launch. Stay tuned.